In the previous video, I introduced the concept of the grid firewall, its technical principles, and the earliest method of bypassing it, VPN. As you might already know if you watched the previous video, the essence of circumventing the grid firewall is to enable free access to the internet by preventing the firewall from intercepting encrypted traffic. Now, I want to discuss the significant impact of the emergence of shadow socks on circumvention technologies. In this video series, my focus will be on content related to bypassing the grid firewall. I plan to create multiple episodes of videos with some time intervals between each episode. If you plan to reside in China for a period of time, taking a few minutes to watch this video will be very helpful to you. Shadow Socks introduced the concept of dividing the proxy server into local and the remote servers, which enabled complete encryption of traffic passing through the grid firewall and eliminated obvious traffic patterns. Subsequently, similar tools based on the same principles, such as SSR and V2Ray, also emerged. Now, let me explain how it works. First, a data packet is sent from the local computer to initiate a data encryption request to the local ShadowSox server. The local server can be the ShadowSox software installed on computer or smartphone, or it can be a hardware device like a circumvention rotor or software rotor. There are various forms, but the logic is consistent. Since the local network is located locally and is not affected by the firewall, it can quickly complete the encryption process. Subsequently, after DNS resolution and passing through the backbone network, the data packet reaches the international gateway. Due to the inability of the grid firewall to detect obvious patterns, it allows the traffic to pass, and it eventually reaches the remote relay server. The remote relay server can be the user's own VPS or a server provided by a ShadowSox service provider. The server decrypts the data and forwards it to the target website, for example, Google, waiting for a response. After being encrypted by the remote relay server, the encrypted data packet passes through the grid firewall again. Since the firewall cannot identify obvious patterns and the data is not plain HTTP, it cannot detect sensitive keywords and can only choose to allow the traffic. Finally, the data reaches the local ShadowSox server, as mentioned earlier, which can be the ShadowSox software installed on a computer or smartphone or a circumvention router. After decryption, the data packet is sent back to the local computer. This process represents the basic working principle and logic of ShadowSox. Although subsequent tools like SSR and V2Ray have minor differences in specific details, they are based on this fundamental logic. Currently, there are various encryption methods and algorithms used for traffic camouflage and feature elimination within the grid firewall. Compared to the traffic that requires circumvention, over 99% of communication traffic is normal. Therefore, the GFW will not block or international encrypted traffic. Hence, it can be said that the current implementation principles similar to shadow socks are relatively secure. The major difference compared to the VPN circumvention mode mentioned earlier is that VPN features are very obvious, following a fixed pattern for communication outside the firewall. Whereas shadow socks encrypts the data locally, so the traffic passing through the firewall is already encrypted, making it impossible for the GFW to detect a fixed pattern feature. In these two episodes, I introduced the GFW and its circumvention principles. In the next episode, I will explain in plain and understandable language the ultimate comparison between VPN and SOX5 protocol for wall climbing, as well as what an airport is. If you find this information helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe the channel.